We're going to take a closer look for the next few minutes at what the outcome of the U.S. presidential election could mean for Canada. When foreign leaders and CEOs call me up to complain about our tariffs, my answer will be very simple. Build it in America. Very simple. We're hearing a lot about Donald Trump's vow to bring in heavy tariffs on foreign imports, everything from raw materials to manufactured goods to food. 10% across the board, measures that seem likely to upend trade relations with Canada. But Kamala Harris is also talking about protecting U.S. industries, especially from China, and she's indicating she would take another look at the free trade deal between the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. Here she is speaking yesterday about Michigan, that battleground border state that's crucial to Canada's auto industry. My plan includes what we will do to continue to invest in American-based industries, American manufacturing, and American workers. So the prospect of major change in U.S.-Canada relations is prompting this open letter from five former Canadian ambassadors in Washington. Their letter calls for a renewed strategy, saying that Canada needs to realign Canada's national interests with the U.S. and other close partners, but turn Canada's, quote, key advantages into strategic assets, making more, mattering more to the United States. And one of the people who drew up this new strategy is with me this morning. Janice Stein is one of the great thinkers in this country. She's a professor in conflict management and the founding director of the Monk School of Global Affairs and Public Policy. Welcome back, Professor. Good morning, Heather. So the U.S., as you well know, it's already Canada's most important ally. 78% of Canadian exports go there. It accounts for 4% of GDP. Why then should Canada be even more all in and should try to matter more to the United States? It's already there. It is there, uh, but as those two clips that you just played for our viewers, Heather, tell us, uh, the United States is moving, it's already there in some areas, but moving heavily toward protectionism, much more so under Donald Trump, but under the Biden administration and under Harris administration as well. How does Canada then preserve its market access? 78% of what we export goes to one market. We are the most uh, dependent on a single market of any developed country in the world. How do we do this? We have to identify where we matter in U.S. supply chains, make what they need, and try to build institutions like we did on the auto pack hmm. that will make us less vulnerable to a transactional president. So I want to look at the sectors in a second, but if you say and acknowledge that whoever is president moving toward more protectionism, would not the counter argument some would make be, should we not, rather than double down, diversify and look elsewhere to other markets? You know, that's a really compelling argument, um, Heather. Um, Pierre Trudeau made it First, he called it the third option. We have been trying to do so for 45 years. When uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau made the argument diversify, we exported 75% to the United States. After all that effort, we export 78%. We failed. It doesn't work. We are too close to the United States and our markets are too integrated. So what you've put forward then and have helped to draw up uh, is this new Matter More strategy. It's expansive. It's laid out in 52 pages. So obviously we can't delve into all of them here this morning. But it's how to broaden, deepen and accelerate the relationship in four key policy areas. Arctic security, critical minerals, energy and environment and technology. Apply this, if we can, in microcosm into one of those policy areas. How would it work for Canada stores of uranium, Professor, one of the critical minerals? Well, I'm glad you chose that one, Heather, because I think it's the easiest argument to make. We um, are blessed with very, very large spots of uranium 
The United States runs the largest number of nuclear reactors in the world. Uh, they need uranium. Now, where do they get it from? They get it from Russia. They get it from Kazakhstan. In a world of great power competition, that is not where the United States wants to buy. And it certainly doesn't want to be dependent on Russia. Up steps Canada, up steps a Canadian company after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, doubles its exports uh, to the United States and processes what it exports as well. And I think that's the magic word. We just don't take it out of the ground. We process the United States now um, is by far more of what we pull out and process in uranium uh, than it did even two years ago, and the companies doubled in size. So why would the United States pay attention to that specific benefit, Professor? How does it benefit the U.S.? You know, um, it's a really fascinating story when we went back and started to dig. I think Canadians will remember that in the first Trump administration, he slapped tariffs on steel and aluminum. And he did so in a way that made Canadians absolutely furious because he said we were a national security threat. That's how he could get it done. But we didn't pay a lot of attention at the time. He didn't do it on uranium because uranium is a strategic necessity for the United States. Um, it is what you could call it a critical asset. Hmm. And he exempted us. That told us virtually everything that we needed to know.